story of the off season, we kind of seem to be in the same place we were when I left. On June 30th, while I was out, our own Adrian Wojnarowski reported that Kevin Durant had requested a trade. On August 10th, now that I'm back, he's still a Brooklyn net. You don't say. <laughs> but a lot has happened behind the scenes since then. I just spoke with someone close to the situation who said, in the latest meeting between Durant and Nets owner Joe Tsai in London last week, a lot more than Durant's feelings about coach Steve Nash and GM Sean Marks was discussed, and that the Nets viewed the meeting as, quote, part of the process. It was important, the source said, for Tsai to hear Durant out and try to understand where he's coming from. Yes, Durant reiterated his request to be traded, but this meeting was far more specific than the first meeting at the end of June and the subsequent conversations Durant and his camp have had with Cy. Bobby, as a, front, as a former front office executive, what does all this mean to you? What, did the Nets have to trade KD, or are they trying to maybe mend some fences? Well, I think when you have a top five player in the NBA, you're trying to mend f fences, especially for a player that's got four years left on his contract. If he was on an expiring deal, or maybe even two years left, then yes, you're maybe looking to try to move him. But when you look at, and we've talked about this on paper a lot, this roster, right? This roster is probably the best that Kevin Durant has had since his stay in Brooklyn when you look at Kyrie Irving, a healthy Ben Simmons, and then some of the moves they were able to do as far as T.J. Warren and bring back Patty Mills and Nick Claxton. Their bench has certainly got a lot better here. Joe Harris is back. Um, we could talk about this team as a top four team. So I think you do everything you, in your power to try to fix if, what the problem is and, and get Kevin Durant back on board. Look, if the Nets could trade Kevin Durant for what they thought he was worth, they would trade him. And they would have traded him, right? But they can't. So they have two choices. One is to, to cut bait and trade him for much less than they think he's worth. And the other is, as Bobby said, to try to mend fences one of the best five players on the planet, have him on the team, and have a team that might be good enough to win a championship this year. So to me, it's really not much of a debate. It's like Bobby said. You try to get Kevin Durant back on board. You try to go into this season with Kyrie Irving, who should be motivated to get paid next summer when he's an unrestricted free agent. We'll see if they can get Ben Simmons on the court. They have Joe Harris. They have Seth Curry. They have Nick Claxton. They have all these guys around these guys. They could be a 55-win team or more. Got to give it a shot. Well, I mean, I think this brings us back to why, this, why these stories have come out in the first place, okay? When a story leaks out, and, and the story recently of, of Josai meeting with Kevin Durant in London leaks out, and Kevin Durant communicating that he, would, he, that he has to make a choice between the coach, Steve Nash, and, and the general manager, Sean Marks, or him. When that leaks out, that's an explosive story. At what point, though, do you say, who, why does that story leak out? Because not all, I mean, it takes a lot of, of very talented reporters digging to try to get information. That's the information that comes out. Why does this story come out? Well, it, it shouldn't have come out because it doesn't help Kevin Durant in this situation. I think it actually probably hurts him. I think it hurts his image um, as far as a player now asking not only the coach, but mm -hmm. certainly the, uh, your general manager to be to be let go here. And I think, I think if, if a year from now, Kevin Durant will look back on the situation and wish he had a do-over. Not to the fact that he asked to be traded. Hey, every player has a right to be traded. But how he has handled the situation as far as what has transpired the last couple of days here. And um, the trade for Durant from a, you know, from a perspective, from his perspective, like this doesn't force the issue. Like for our Sean Marks or Steve Nash yeah. or Joe Sy to say, you know what? Now we've got to trade him. Now we basically yeah. have to set an artificial timeline. The offers are the offers, right? We know what the offers are going to be and what they potentially could be, and this is why this is going to linger into the, into the regular season. And to your point, Bobby, it just makes next month when these guys get back together for training camp all the more awkward, right? That's really all it does is it makes the situation more awkward for Kevin and for the Nets because obviously it's already going to be an awkward situation if he's still on the team and he has to be traded. Now he's asked to be traded, and he's asked for the coach of GM to be let go. And they're all going to be there together at the start of training camp. So isn't that kind of the point, though, to make it awkward? I mean, you could argue that if from a from a that standpoint, it could potentially move things along. But as Bobby said, there's no reason for it to move along because the offers aren't going to change. And if anything, this is only going to give teams less incentive to increase their offers. And the Nets have shown over the past six and, weeks they don't like what they have. And I think for to how this can work is for the team meeting, first night of team meeting, for Kevin Durant to get up and say, hey. As long as I'm a part of this Brooklyn team, I'm going to try to win as many games as mm. possible. I'm going to try to help Seth Curry get that next contract. I'm going to help T.J. Warren kind of, you know, rehabilitate, you know, from that injury here. And, and, if, and when contract. I'm not here, then I'm not part of the team. But as long as I am here, 
I am going to help this team. And if I'm, because who knows, we could be talking a year from now that Kevin Durant is still on this Brooklyn Nets roster. He's under because, contract for four more well, years. And the, we've said it all along that they are waiting for the perfect trade package to come along. It hasn't come along, and it might not come along for a long time here. Well, so, and the other thing, and we, you know, we've talked about this too, Ramona. This situation reminded me for a long time of what happened with Kobe Bryant with the Lakers mm -hmm. a long time ago, right? Go back 15 years. Kobe wanted out. There were all these talks with the Bulls. It was all public because he had a no trade clause. They were debating offers back and forth for months, right? It was a huge thing. And ultimately, Kobe stayed on the Lakers. They got to the finals that season. They won the next two championships. Like, I'm not guaranteeing that Kevin Durant's going to be there the rest of his contract or that the Nets are going to win championships, but it, it would not be the first time that we've seen a situation go like this and then turn around again. That, I mean, that, you that is possible. Because, uh, you know, I was sitting at home. It's, it's June 30th. I'm about three weeks after the baby's born. And, like, usually you're pretty checked out, right? You're like, okay, I, I've, I've got a lot, of, lot to handle. But this stuff happens, and I'm, I'm in it. And I just couldn't help but go on Twitter. I was like, there's no th – Kevin Durant can want out. But they, they don't th – this was J June 30th. I couldn't help it. As seismic as this KD news is, I'm old enough to remember Kobe going on L.A. radio, literally five different shows on L.A. radio, and requesting a trade saying he'd rather play on Pluto than the, La the, uh, the Lakers were looking for trades and not doing it, then Kobe winning an MVP and L.A. going to the finals the next year. The, the, essentially, he had the same very public conversation, although this is not public. Kevin Durant didn't go on any this radio shows. way show. more public. Yeah, Kobe was way more public. At name on the quote. This isn't Jimmy Butler in practice in Minnesota or Kobe on the radio in Minnesota or in L.A. Yep. This is a superstar wanting out, communicating that behind the scenes in private meetings with the owners, all of which eventually leaked out. Now, when nothing has happened, th this situation has been forced further. But if you're another team, Bobby, and this is the part I think it, that goes around the, the, that speaks to the rest of the league. What gives you the confidence to make a great offer for Kevin Durant right now, knowing that he's already requested a trade for a team that he just signed a four-year, $198 million extension? In, in theory, all 29 teams should be lined up right now. But in, in theory. In theory, right? We're going it, back to on paper again, Bob. Yeah, in theory. But in reality, there's only four or five that can go out and make this deal. And I, I, I've said this, you know, when I was in, in New Jersey, we went out and got Darren Williams from, mm -hmm. from Utah. But that was a little bit different here because we knew that Williams was still in the prime of his career. The Durant situation is interesting. We've said all along he's got four years left yep. on his contract. When those four years are done, that's it, right? He'll be 38, 39, you know, 38 years old. There's mm -hmm. not another contract coming. It's not like going out and getting Scotty Barnes in a deal or going out and getting J um, Jalen Brown in a deal who's still in the prime of their career. So we basically have eliminated basically 24 teams. I mean, the, the best team out there would be the Knicks. I mean, we haven't talked about the Knicks at all There's in this situation here. And, and I've worked in Brooklyn, and I would not trade Kevin Durant to the, to the Knicks. I mean, you might as well move back to East Rutherford if that's <laughs> going to be the case. But the Knicks would be the ideal situation because they've got eight draft picks. They've got all these young players. They've got young players, uh, R.J. Barrett here. So you eliminate them because we're not going to trade with the Knicks. We're not going to – Orlando, they're not going to go out and get him. Sacramento or Oklahoma City, Houston. So the, the field certainly shrinks there. Well, a name you always have to tie to Kevin Durant is, of course, Kyrie Irving. Take a look at what Kyrie's agent, Chatelia O'Reilly, said to the New York Post. I am not sure where this narrative is coming from, but Kyrie does not hate Steve Roshan. That's not a part of his being nor how he represents himself in the world. It's about peace, love, and acceptance. Despite that message, his agent declined to comment on whether Irving agrees with Kevin Durant, who reportedly wants Marks and Nash fired. Tim, so not exactly the biggest sign of support from Kyrie. How do you think the rest of the NBA is viewing what is happening out in, term, in, in Brooklyn in terms of this, the future of the team? Well, look, I think the rest of the league is viewing this in the same noise that I made, the sigh that I made, <laughs> that this is just going on and on and on for forever and ever and ever. I mean, look, I, it's like Bobby said, the rest of the league looks at this situation, sees how much of a mess it is, and says, we don't need to offer the Nets the sun, the moves, and the stars for Kevin Durant because they're going to have to do something because this is too ugly. Like, there's no reason for us to up our offer right now, which but is why I think the Nets are going to have to try to ride this out because not only would I think it be in their best interest to just get Kevin Durant on board because they're not going to get anything as good as him anyway, but also they, aren't, they don't really have another option right now besides trading him for just far, far less. Well, theoretically, there's a collective bargaining agreement which, which 
says that you have a contract and if you don't show up to play under your contract that the team can find you that the team cannot play you but what this is now the third year in a row or the third big story in a row of a superstar requesting a trade and the team having to confront these kind of issues what, what can be done here yeah I mean we thought last year the Ben Simmons situation was kind of a one-off as far as a player not reporting now we'll wait and see if it's going to be the same with Kevin Durant I mean it's there's rules in place as far as you can be fined you know up to when you start missing games okay $500,000 for Kevin Durant, which is certainly a large number. You're limited as far as when it comes to practice, right? It's up, we saw it last year with Ben Simmons, $50,000 here. So not only are teams kind of gauging as far as what the market is going, teams are sitting back and saying, you know what? We need a little more teeth to these rules here. We've got the CBA that both sides can opt out on December 15th. We're going to put some more stringent rules here. But here's my question. If you're a player that's earned $300 million or $350 mm -hmm. million like Kevin Durant, what does money mean to you? If you're trying to set a principle as far as a guy holding out, a little bit different if a guy's on a rookie contract. I also do not think this is going to go the way of Ben Simmons. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I, I feel pretty yeah. confident that Kevin Durant's going to show up and play. I do think the Ben Simmons situation was mostly a one-off, and I don't think we're going to see some epidemic of guys not showing up and just sacrificing tens of millions of dollars. I think, you know, that was obviously a pretty wild situation, but I, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. And I think, frankly, I assume you agree, these CBA, CBA negotiations, to me, are going to move along pretty smoothly because everybody looks at the situation right now, sees the league is making a ton of money, sees that the tide is raising all boats, and everybody, from everybody I've talked to, is pretty happy about what's going on. The league's in probably the best shape it's been in a long time when you look at post-COVID with BRI at close to $9 billion. We've got a new TV deal that's going to be coming up soon. And both here. sides and work together all the yeah, way through Yeah, I mean, I think everything. we'll see some tweaks. We'll, we can probably...